guys it's the gray wolf back to do another video for you again uh, this video is <clears throat> was prompted by one of my YouTube uh, subscribers he asked me this question and I actually did not have an answer for this because it's not something I've ever really given much thought to the question is what is the differences between standard and you know standard analog and digital servos and there's a that's kind of a two-part question uh, there's the physical differences and then there's the differences in the way the two operate so we'll cover the physical differences first because essentially there really aren't any uh, they're basically the same thing now this let me zoom in here so you guys can see this better this is the guts out of an uh, out of a digital servo one that I fried as you guys can probably see right there it uh, stinks something fierce but for uh, this demonstration it suits my purpose so anyway as you can see we have you know this would this would be the the servo wire coming out of the case which is connected to a uh, circuit board and connected to the circuit board is of course the motor right here and there's the, there's a potentiometer which this is actually this actually fits up inside of the output shaft of the servo and it tells the circuit board you know the position of the output shaft at any given moment so in terms of physical differences there are there are virtually none this is a standard analog servo again right here as you can see we have a motor down inside here uh, and I didn't want to take this one all the way apart like I did the other one because this one's still functioning uh, but down inside of the case there you can see the potentiometer which is like I said is connected into the output shaft there and then of course we got our circuit board now this obviously is not a digital circuit board as you can tell it doesn't have FETs on it it, it has a bunch of resistors and whatnot uh, but so physical differences virtually none they have basically have the same three parts the the gearing the gearing in the top is essentially the same uh, the only difference is in the way that it actually does its job and the way that it does its job is when this when this thing is sitting like say your your RC is just sitting there in neutral and it's centered this motor is not going to be receiving any power it's just going to be sitting there until either you give it a command with the transmitter or if you're say you're say you're running in a straight line and your turn your wheels start to turn a little bit well this potentiometer is gonna gonna pick up on the fact that that servo output shaft is moving a little bit it's gonna send a signal to this circuit board and the circuit board of course is gonna send a signal to the motor to react or to act or react in the proper manner to keep the center to keep the servo where it's supposed to be or put it where you want it to be so essentially this signal that's being sent is done in a series of on off pulses um, it's a wave of pulses essentially and I actually drew a little diagram here for you guys if you can see this so these at the bottom of these pulses right here these are the off signals the top is the on signals and 
so whenever you when you whenever whenever you send a command to say turn the wheels, your servo is going to send a wave of these pulses. Or, or I'm sorry, your um, yeah, your the circuit board inside the the servo is going to send a wave of these pulses to the motor to make the motor spin <clears throat> until it reaches the desired position. The advantage of <clears throat> excuse me. The advantage of the digital servos over the standard servos is that the digital servos do this at a much higher rate. So if this is the wave pattern for a standard analog servo, the wave pattern for a digital servo would look something like this. The on-off signals are sent at a much faster rate. Now, this does a couple of things. One, it decreases the dead band in the servo. Two, it increases the response time of the servo. It increases sensitivity or resolution, if you will, uh, of the servo. So, you know, your more minor adjustments are picked up on. And the there's another there's another advantage that I that's escaping my my memory at the moment but um, oh holding power is also much greater because there's less dead band there so holding power is is also increased and um, that's really the big, that's really the big difference. That's that's the advantages that you that you pick up using a digital servo versus the old school, you know, analog ones. Now there is one con or one negative thing about digital servos versus analog servos, and that is since these on-off pulses are sent more frequently to the servo, the servo consumes more power than say this one, say the analog one. So that is one downside. However, with battery capacities, you know, increasing at a monthly rate for the same size and weight of, of batteries, uh, the increased power consumption really isn't an issue. So, there you have it. You've got there's about four uh, there's about four pros to using digital servos, and there's only one real con to using a digital servo, which these days isn't even that much of a con. So, my advice to you guys would be if you've got if you've got uh, you know any analog servos and you're and you're looking for you know less dead band, uh, less, or uh, I'm sorry, more uh, holding power, uh, more, well, okay, and then the other, so the other thing is, I'm, I, I forgot one thing, the other, there's, it, there is one other advantage too, and that is in reaction time, which it, I kind of covered this already, but, so one of the one, you know, the pro of, you know, a faster reaction time is that essentially more torque can be applied more quickly. So where if you were to graph it out, a analog servo would graph probably something like this in terms of in terms of going from zero torque to full torque it would probably it would probably graph something similar to this a digital servo would graph something more like this I mean that's just a crude that's just a crude drawing it's not exact but so essentially, um, now this comes in, into play much more for like helicopter and airplane guys than it does, uh, you know, say on your, your basher monster trucks or, or whatever. Um, 
may come into play a little more for racers, but for bashers, this probably isn't a, a huge deal. But, you know, that's essentially the, the differences in a nutshell. So you've got four or five pros there, only one con, which is barely a con. No, no reason not to use digital servos. So anyway, I hope this, uh, I hope this information was useful to you guys, and I appreciate you watching my videos. And uh, if you know, if you if you like the video, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Uh, if you know somebody that could use this information or might like to have this information or any of the information in any of my videos, please you know feel free to post them wherever you like, uh, pass them along, uh, and you know ask your friends and and uh, forum members to to subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments for me. Uh, you can either reach me on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash Graywolf Studios 74, or you can email me at Graywolf Studios 74 at gmail.com. And that's it. Peace. I'm out.